Okay, um, this evening I'm doing a little bit of prep work on some eggs to go in the incubator, and uh, you know, just for the record, this is my first time doing this, so I'm just going off what the literature's told me. Uh, but you know, all these things are pretty, they're pretty simple, really pretty straightforward, not as complicated as you might think in your mind they are. So what we've actually got here, just for grins, is I've got a buddy that's got some ducks, and we're gonna try hatching some duck eggs. Why not try something a little bit more complicated on your first go? Um, so anyway, I went over to his place this evening and I got a total of 10 duck eggs. That's all he had. And um, got them home here and now I'm trying to clean them up. So they were pretty dirty because ducks tend to just drop eggs wherever they want. And um, so some of them had some pretty bad dirt on them, which a lot of people tell you if they're dirty eggs, just discard them. Uh, but you can clean them. So the first thing that I did was sanded them. Now, because of the bloom that's on any egg, duck egg, chicken egg, as far as I'm concerned, any other egg, I guess, you don't want to wash them aggressively with soap and water because you can actually wash off the bloom and that's actually what protects the egg. So the first thing I did was I took some sandpaper here. And this is just 220 grit. I just grabbed some in the garage. And you can see even still, they still look kind of dirty, but they're smooth. They had like chunks of poo and mud stuck on them. So I got all that sanded off. And then what I'm working on now is sanitizing them. So this is just a standard sanitizing solution. It's one teaspoon of bleach and one quart of warm water. You want to make sure you use water that is warmer than the eggs. If it's colder than the eggs, it somehow can actually force bacteria into the egg. By being warmer, it keeps that from happening, which to me kind of it seems backwards, but that's what the direction said. So, I'm dropping the eggs in the sanitizing solution, of course, gently, not really dropping them. And they're only going to sit in there for about a minute. So, we're at a minute 45 on the video here. So, if I'm still yapping at about 2.45 or 3 minutes, we'll pull them out. But... Doing those four, I already did these five, and I'm not doing this one, and I'll show you why. I'm actually going to shut the lights out here, and we're going to do a little bit of candling work, and I'll show you some interesting things about candling eggs. So, put the lights out. Turn on my little egg candler here, which is just a cheapo flashlight, really, but it's got a cool rubber, little rubber ring on it, so that you can see some stuff. This egg here, looking from the outside, looks like it's probably okay. Actually, now that I know I can feel it. There's a crack right there. You don't notice it as much when you just look at it, but when you put it on the candle, it becomes very obvious. So, if I can get the camera to focus on it right anyway, me looking at it is pretty obvious. The camera might not like it. There it is. Amazing, fancy camera. See that big old crack all the way around? So we do not want to even bother incubating this one because there's a good chance it'll get infected and uh, contaminated and not work right. So that one gets discarded, hit it in the frying pan. Um, the other thing to look for, just for grins, is the air sac. It's not really important. Like, I don't think you have to see it for any means, but you can kind of see it in the top of the egg. I'm not for sure how well y'all can see it, but I know when I'm looking at them without the camera, I can see a couple of them. But hey, we are already up over three minutes. I gotta get my eggs out of the solution. I get my little eggs here in the sanitizing solution. And again, pull them out. You don't want to scrub them. You just want to pull them out. Ooh, that's kind of weird how it did that. <laughs> pull them out. Just kind of shake them so they're dry. And uh, yeah, going on two minutes now. Man, I get I get in a hurry when I get to talking. I forget about things. Uh, so I'm gonna give since I since I found that crack on that one, I'm gonna go through all of them again real quick and. Uh, I'll candle them all for cracks and any other defects. But other than that, we're going to let them lay here and dry. And uh, then we're going to put them in the incubator. So just for fun, I went through on all the eggs and I candled them. And I marked out where their air sac was and how big it was. So on this one, for example, the air sac's pretty small. Right there on top, which they should all be on the big end of the egg. And this last one I just did, the air sac is significantly bigger. Now that could mean that this is actually an older egg, most likely. So you got a big one, bigger one, and then you got mostly all the other ones are smaller ones. And that's fine, per the literature. You can have some that are, you know, so this one's probably like just today, little tiny air sac. Uh, and the other ones are probably, you know, progressively, maybe, maybe these are two or three days old. Um, but they should be fine, if, according to everything I've read. So these are all going in. These two both had cracks. So they'll go to the frying pan. Excuse me. Boy. Need some sleep, I guess. So yeah. 
these are going to the incubator and um, hopefully they work. We'll know in a month.